This is a Hyundai Ioniq 6. Hyundai's answer to the Polestar 2 and Tesla Model 3. Available in three grades, eight color options, four interior options, and a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty. It has features like vehicle to load, 800 volt ultra rapid charging, and other features that neither Tesla nor Polestar have. But on other fronts, like acceleration, ride, fit, and finish, that's where it gets really interesting. So hang around as I detail all this and a lot more in my review of the Ionic 6. The Ionic 6 is priced at more than $11,000 above an equivalent Model 3. However, all three models get remote smart park assist, handled by this ugly, cheap looking key fob. Anyway, it can do perpendicular, parallel, diagonal, as well as forward and reverse remote parking. So that would mean adding enhanced autopilot to a Tesla at $5,100, closing the gap to $6,000 difference. Sure, this won't change lanes for you on the highway or freeway, and nor will it do some sort of party trick like remote summon, but nonetheless, I'm just trying to compare EVs to EVs. The dynamic starts at $74,000, then the Technique at $83,500, giving you all-wheel drive, sunroof, heated rear seat, and heated steering wheel, lounge reclining seats to the front, and large 20-inch alloy wheels. Or this one, the Epic, starting at $88,000 before on-road costs, which adds a heat pump, battery preconditioning system, and digital wing mirrors. These are cool, more of them soon. Let's do a bit of a walk around. First up, these headlights. Did they remind you of the Tesla Model 3, or was it just me? This rear reminds me of a Porsche or a Mercedes CLA. What do you reckon? Comment below. It's complicated with no less than two different spoilers and so many different lines and things going up. The matrix makes it work and return and at night time this thing looks amazing. But there's also these other little knickknacks that I actually enjoy. The grey contrasting against the black and these diffusion grills which actually look pretty good. And you have this saloon style look with a sweeping sea line that meets up with the boot. Its proportions are overall larger than a Tesla Model 3. It's 16 centimeters longer, which you can really see and feel here in the rear. I mean, look how much leg room I've got. It's also three centimeters wider and five centimeters taller. Mind you, in the back, it is a bit compromised because of that rear sloping roof. And two passengers, that's fine. But if you put three adults across the back here, typically the person on the outer board seat will actually have their head up against that headliner if the let's say a tall person. Now go with me here. This is a Hyundai but its quality and fit and finish is up there with the likes of BMW, Audi and many other European brands. Just look at the detailing in the eco leather seats or the top quality carpets. You've got a Bose eight speaker sound system and a car that turns heads. When I first saw photographs of it, I was like, mm, no thank you. But after seeing it in the flesh, your perception of it actually changes. So what do you think? Is it a beauty or a beast? Let me know down in the comments and look, whilst you're there, consider subscribing and turn those notifications so you know when my next video is out. If you get a Hyundai Ioniq 6, it comes with not only that dealer's network and service support, but you also get a five-year unlimited warranty, 160,000 kilometer or eight-year warranty on the battery. Also, service requirements only every two years, so that's pretty good. Okay, Tesla, get your notepad and pen ready because here's 10 things that either you don't have or could be a lot better in Tesla Model 3. If you stand with your hands full at the back of the Ionic 6, the boot will automatically open. Nice. When you walk up to the Ionic 6, the door handles present and people can actually open the doors. No more of the, how do I get in here thing. If you work on the road and you need some power, you could always plug in to this available power point, your laptop and get it charged. Or the Ionic 6 also has vehicle to low power available through this adapter on the outside port. So glamping, yeah dead easy. And what's impressive about it is it can handle up to 3,600 watts. That means you could run a heater, a TV and boil a kettle and still have plenty of watts available. It's got a heads up display and it's got a glove drawer, meaning you can open it without having to press two buttons on a damn screen. The seats are heated but importantly also ventilated, which in Australia, absolute must. 
you've got 360 degree sensors as well as cameras so you can look around and understand where things are in relation to the car something that Tesla still needs to implement it's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay meaning that I could do this what is 77.4 divided by 20.1 the answer is approximately 3.850746. All right, so today, 385 kilometers of range, but more on that soon. You can get a tow pack installed, meaning towing about 750 kilograms unbraked or braked 1,500 kilograms, which is 500 kilograms more than a Tesla Model 3. I've come to the Russo estate where they make not only beautiful wines, but also some very bespoke and unique accommodation. So check out the link down below. With the Ionic 6, it's got a lot of great things and there's also some things that need to be improved. If you're carrying a bit of a prankster and there's someone in the front seat, they could be very unkind and actually move this through these controls on the side of the seat, which is a great option, mind you. And press it all the way forwards and tilt it all the way forwards until you end up with this horrible mess. It's not very good and I think it's easily sorted if Hyundai actually just use the sensor that's built into the seat, you know, the one that they use for the airbag deployment as well as seatbelt warning. And if someone's seated there, I think these controls should be disabled. Just a suggestion. The proximity key works really well, like it will open up these doors when I get close to it. And when I walk further away, they'll also close again, which, yeah, is just what you expect. But why is it that when I've used a car and I get out, I actually have to press this button to make the doors lock or use the ugly key? It doesn't make sense. The Ionic 6 has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. However, it's wired and you do it through this USB-A slot. And it's weird that right next to it, you've got a wireless charging spot. So what gives? I don't understand. It's 2023 after all. So you know what I did? I'd fixed it. I took my AA wireless unit, plugged it in, taped it down, and this way, this ultra short USB cable and the magic of the AA wireless unit means I now have wireless Android Auto. So it means when I get into this car, it projects my phone onto the screen and problem solved. The Ionic 6 boot is 410 liters, only 15 less than the Tesla Model 3. However, sub boot, well, there's very little sub boot to talk about. And in the front, it's only 15 liters because of, well, thanks to the dual motors, which I love. But yeah, the Tesla has way more cargo carrying capacity. The back seat release things are awesome, but the seats actually aren't spring loaded. So you either have to dive into this very deep boot to try and get the seats down, or it's just easier to walk around and get them down yourself. Now, whilst that almost three meter wheelbase means that there's plenty of room within this cabin, I mean, remember that knee room before? What I didn't show you was that my feet actually have to tuck under this front seat. And if you're a standard height like me, 170, 180 centimeters, not an issue. But if you're tall, yeah, you're gonna have to basically um, have your knees up and off this bench, because again, it's very low and it doesn't really support under thigh. I mean, to be clear, it is, it is a really lovely place to be. It's sophisticated, it's dark and it's moody. Limo-like, you've got the rear privacy glasses tinted. Two USB sockets here, as well as in the front for the uh, passengers. You've got a pull-down rear uh, seat here for two cups, or two uh, bottles rather, and they're reasonable size, and the front ones are very big, but the door bins, they're tiny, like, they don't even bother. And finally, the Ionic 6 gets app integration, like what you're used to on a Tesla or a Polestar. The app is called Blue Link and it's where you can remotely control the climate to take the edge off the car on a cold winter's morning or locate it, send directions for your next trip and do a lot more. There's a lot to go through. So again, I've made a separate video which I'll put up here somewhere and leave the link down below. So if you wanna check it out and find out what's so good, what's so bad and yeah, why I'm calling it V1, please follow that link after this video. For a driver and passenger, you've got dual zone climate control, heating and ventilation that can be linked to the climate control, DAB radio, Bluetooth, and sounds of nature. Oh yes, if you're not into headbanging music, meditating, then you could drive to this sort of tune. Or this? 
or maybe even this. Or if you really miss the sound of noisy, dirty petrol or diesel engine noise, just add some artificial electronic sounds to your life. Okay, before we get on the road, I wanna talk about these digital side mirrors because I've seen them before on the Audi e-tron and they're kind of a welcome addition here. What with the translucent casing where you can see the indicators inside of them and you've got a little tiny camera here protected from the elements so muck and grime don't get in easily. Unlike normal mirrors, which tilt to show you the curb say or further afield just by moving around, these actually remain stationary and are wide enough to actually then crop down a view to suit whatever driving mode you might be in. So reversing say, looking for the curb, you name it. In the week I've spent with the Ionic 6, I've gotten used to them just even after a few days. At first I kept on looking outside, expecting to see something behind me, but all I saw were these little cameras. And uh, I think this is gonna be the future of driving. My only issue with them though, is that if you get a bit of muck on them, headlights, they actually create a little bit of a halo around them, making it a bit hard to see, just a bit. But easily sorted out with a bit of a lickety lickety and <laughs> you're all done. Okay, in a moment, I'm about to get in some driving impressions and I've actually done a separate video on this one as well because well, there's a lot to cover in this car and in this review, I just felt I couldn't do it justice. So if you want to see that, yeah, follow the link up here or look in the description below. Visibility out to the front sides and into the rear is actually really good. Like you can see it back there. It's a really good size windscreen and also the rear view mirror is good too. And uh, the headrests are quite low, so there's no compromise with rear views. You've got a ton of safety systems such as ABS, electronic uh, brake force distribution, rear cross traffic alerts, lots of airbags, blind spot detection, and that God view for the 360 degree camera suite. All very good stuff. Now, something that has me baffled is the number of drive modes in this car. There's no less than 16. From acceleration profiles such as snow, eco, normal, or sport, and also reach in with level zero, one, two, or three. So for me, I'm a one pedal driving man. So I'm gonna use the left pedal to engage I pedal mode and yeah that's where you should also be because it's bloody awesome and it means that the accelerator is now my brake as well so when I uh, go forwards like this and I let my foot off the accelerator the car's going to come to a complete stop now one of the things I'd like to see improved with the Ionic 6 is its amount of regen the amount of bite and, and how it can slow the car down when I take my foot off I would figure that probably should have happened sooner. Just a recommendation and uh, it's, um, it's not, not like a typical petrol or diesel car experience, but it definitely is something to be mindful of. Whenever I get an electric car to review, I always test out uh, the amount of wind noise uh, you hear inside the cabin with an actual decibel meter. I've measured that and uh, put it into this table. And also I uh, do a speed test. So, uh, let's talk about the wind noise for a second because on the day I actually measured this, despite some wind, the Ionic 6 at stationary is the quietest car I've ever been in. My decibel meter actually said it's so low, like 30 decibels or even less, it's not even worth me measuring. Yeah, uh, but conversely, when we're moving at speed, it's pretty average, it's stock standard. And the wind is not coming from the front, A pillar, roof, side. The all laminated glass, no, it's actually coming from those wheels and through the wheel arches. And it's not unpleasant, it's a lot better than say a petrol or diesel car, but it's uh, not the industry leader here. One of the things that I've found with this car is that if you turn on all the safety features, it beeps at you all the time for, well, no apparent reason. Sure, not right now, but for instance, if I want to see in my heads up display on my screen here and also over there what the speed limit around the zone is, I need to have it, that feature turned on, which means I also need to have it beep at me if I dare go over it. 
and it's super frustrating because also when there's a speed limit change in the area and like right now it's saying it's supposed to be 30 k's per hour here because the last sign that the camera saw was a 30 k per hour sign but it's not it's actually 80 here um it beeped at me saying you're over the limit you're over the limit and it's like can you stop and then when you're driving just out of nowhere you'll hear a mysterious like what, what 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 are you beeping at me for stop beeping at me i did nothing wrong and it's most infuriating all right, zero to 100 test with that silly sound on. Ready, three, two, one. And we're there. <laughs> oh, that's crazy fun. Anyway, zero to 100 claim time is 5.1 seconds. In my testing, I only got 5.3 seconds. Uh, mind you, it was a bit windy that day and uh, yeah, the battery wasn't completely full. So I think next time I'll be able to get it. The Ionic 6 aerodynamic design means it's got a drag coefficient of 0.21, which beats Tesla's Model 3, which is I think 0.23 from memory. In fact, well, most of the cars out there. The entry level model has a claimed range of 614 kilometers with a single motor. But this one, because it's got dual motors and obviously a bit more weight and different tires, only gets claimed 519 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. My experience, closer to about 390 because of well, a bit of acceleration and just having way too much fun with it. All models get the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and from what I could tell on the interwebs it's a nickel cobalt manganese type so charging to 100% is only encouraged if you're about to depart on a long trip say. Uh, otherwise these things like getting charged to 80 or 90% which you can do at home like this or in the community with one of these free chargers which are out and about. Oh yeah, free charging, free electricity, free fuel, absolutely this brilliant thing about EVs. Thankfully, in the charging menu, you can set it for AC charging to whatever you want it to be and DC at a different level as well. This I like. Because this is actually the highest spec model, it will do battery preconditioning. And I'm thinking we should actually go there now and do a rapid charging session to see one, how fast it can actually go because it's blazingly fast. And two, if this actually works. If you come to a 350 kilowatt ultra rapid charger like this one, the Ionic 6 can go from 10 to 80% in as little as 18 minutes. Now, with thanks to its updated software, we're actually preconditioned the battery and accept that ultra rapid charge. Something Tesla's only do, mind you, when they go to superchargers and no other chargers. This is a great benefit. Also, because Tesla's are only 400 volts, they very quickly peak with their power going through this massive fat cable, but then they quickly taper off. Whereas with this 800 volt system, it will actually sustain that rate for a lot longer. And in this car, it's also got a payment gateway system built into it. So when the CCS combo talks to this car, and that's what they do by the way, it actually goes, oh, you've got a payment system, fantastic. Yeah, we'll just get on and charge. That's the experience that people have with Teslas and it's in our very near future in Australia and I can't wait for these guys to pick it up. So there you have it, the 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6. To me, it's a well-rounded and compelling option to the Tesla Model 3 or Polestar 2. Its looks might be polarizing, but again, wait until you actually see it in person before judging, as its distinctive design and feature set outcompetes Tesla in no less than 10 different segments, particularly with warranty and support. From its great ride and handling, vehicle to load, powered door handles and auto boot, plus a lot more. However, things like the app need some work. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay should be wireless at this price point. And basics like remembering your drive mode and iPedal selection should also be standard driver profile settings in 2023. Would I choose this or some other electric car? You know that I actually do like the Ionic 5, what with its retro futuristic styling and that utility that I actually enjoy. So actually, I'd rather the Ionic 5, but I get why people would like sedans such as the Ionic 6, Tesla Model 3 and BMW i4 among others. 
That's thankfully because people prefer sportier handling and they're confident in their car's ability to get them out of trouble should they need it. So if you're in the market for a Tesla Model 3 or a Polestar 2, I would definitely give this one a try out because you will not be disappointed. It's a compelling car, it handles great, and it ticks a lot of boxes that will take many by surprise. All right, if you've enjoyed this video, please, again, do consider subscribing, it's absolutely free and it genuinely supports the channel. If you wanna take that support to the next level, think about Patreon membership or YouTube membership. And otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be green.